In the last study of the day, I talked about how writing about traumatic experiences can result in clinically relevant improvements in both asthma and arthritis. So today we're going to look at a, a really important message that two famous YouTubers touched on last week, um, Casey Neistat and PewDiePie, about forced positivity and happiness. Welcome to today's study of the day. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ben and thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. I believe that people make the best decisions for their health when they have the best information available. And that's the simple mission of this channel, to empower you with health information. Whether you are looking to treat a health concern or simply optimize how you feel, I want to share interesting, evidence-based content that you can take and apply to your, your life today. Both Casey Neistat and PewDiePie hit a collective nerve last week when they both talked about happiness and forced positivity. Both of these men have wildly popular YouTube channels and, and spend a major part of their lives presenting themselves to the world. They both expressed a growing concern, specifically for young people who are expo exposed to online content, whether through Facebook or YouTube or Snapchat or Instagram, that present a certain level of artificial happiness. And now being exposed to this level of artificial happiness can make people feel less positively about their own life. And I can't applaud them enough for saying that sometimes I don't feel as happy as I appear in my videos. Listening to these two YouTubers talk about forced positivity has inspired this study of the day. The study is called Desperately Seeking Happiness. Okay, so let's look at the experiment. To examine whether valuing happiness might extend to clinical outcomes, this study examined the hypothesis that depression is associated with highly valuing happiness. 98 participants were recruited for the study who were all in remission of major depressive disorder and had a history of at least three prior episodes. Each participant was evaluated using two scales. The valuing happiness scale, which consists of seven items measuring to what extent participants highly value happiness. For example, feeling happy is extremely important to me, rated on a scale of one strongly disagree to seven strongly agree, and to the Beck depression inventory, which consists of 22 items assessing current depressive symptoms rated on a scale of zero, I do not feel sad, to three, I am so sad or unhappy I, I cannot stand it. So what did the results say? What this study found is that valuing happiness was indeed associated with greater depressive symptoms in people with a recurrent history of major depressive disorder. Alright, so let's look at the results in a, in a graph form. If the y-axis was valuing happiness, don't value happiness a lot, value happiness a lot, and the x was a depression scale, not very depressed, very depressed. What the results would look like is this. The more that you value happiness, the more likely it is to experience depression. So people that don't place a, a high value on happiness are less likely to be depressed. And people that place a high value on happiness are more likely to experience depression. So what's the take home? Although studying depression often involves looking at what people are currently feeling, the present results suggest that the emotions people want to feel may also play an important role. Specifically, accepting one's emotions and not in inflexibly striving for one specific emotion, such as happiness, appears to contribute to greater psychological health. So this is the paradox that we're faced with. The more we want to feel happy, the more likely it is that we're going to feel depressed. So we can see that it is the extreme nature of valuing happiness, rather than valuing happiness in general, that is associated with the depressive outcomes. So what action can we take from this message? What PewDiePie and Casey Neistat are calling for is more emotional honesty and more emotional transparency. 
This past week they did a huge service to everyone everywhere by simply saying, sometimes I don't feel as happy as I appear in my videos. The world is a better place when people feel comfortable sharing their, their true emotional feelings moment to moment. It's in the true acceptance of our feelings in the moment, the anger or the frustration or the depression or the anxiety that allows us to, to reach a more peaceful, less restless place. So here are five things I want to suggest for your homework and your takeaway from this study. Number one, understand the end goal is not necessarily to feel happy all the time. Number two, bring awareness to how strongly you hold the belief that you should be happy all the time and how attached are you to this idea. Get comfortable riding the middle way. Embrace the ebb and flow of life and, and embrace each emotion as it, as it comes, as it presents. Number four, try not to get overly attached to the times when you feel positive or overly averse to the times when you feel negative. And finally, be honest with your emotions day to day. Try not to force or want to force that emotion to be anything other than it currently is. And just like that, that's today's study of the day. Thanks everyone for checking it out. If, if you have any questions, please leave comments below. Um, I'll leave some resources at the bottom in the description. Um, some resources to help find the middle way in your emotional lives. A book by Pima Chodron um, called When Things Fall Apart. Um, I'll also leave the original videos by Casey Neistat um, about the pursuit of happiness, um, as well as the PewDiePie video where he talked about um, this forced positivity. Mm -hmm.